It's my pleasure to introduce our final panel of the conference, and we're going to be speaking with leaders from the ocean and river small ship cruising segment. And I'd like to welcome them to the stage right now. First, from the ocean small ship segment, Gretchen Bell, Vice President of Sales, Sea Dream Yacht Club. Gretchen. Good to see you. John Delaney, Senior Vice President, Global Marketing and Sales, Seaborne Cruise Line. Good morning, John. Naveen Sani, Chief Executive Officer, Ponant Yacht Cruises and Expeditions. Good morning. And from the River Small, sh small Ship uh, Cruise segment, Catherine Bonner, Senior Vice President of River and Small Ship Cruising, Tauk River Cruises. Catherine. How are you? <laughs> Patrick Clark, Managing Director, Avalon Waterways. Patrick, good morning. Nicola Iannone, Executive Vice President, USA and Canada, Crossy Europe, River Cruises. Uh, good morning. Yourself. Christine yeah, Karst, nice. Executive Vice President and Co-Owner, Ama Waterways. Okay, good morning. Thank you. Good to see you. And Carter Robertson, Vice President, Communications, American Cruise Lines, Pearl Seas Cruises. Smart young guy. Carter, good morning, Smart sir. Guy. Yeah. Thank you all for being here, He's and hopefully I'll fit in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> Big panel, ladies and gentlemen. That's probably what you're thinking, and very deliberately so, because small ship cruising is a big deal in this industry. And it's evidenced by the fact that our marketplace has a devoted specialty small ship cruising pavilion, which I encourage you all to attend. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. I don't, I'm, it's like a Play-Doh fun factory trying to get me into this chair. Um, so, so to kick off the conversation, we're going to get started right away. Um, you know, Catherine, uh, to help those in our audience who uh, may be new to selling uh, small ship cruises, how would you differentiate river cruising from small ship cruising, uh, expedition, adventure, that sort of thing? Okay. Thanks, and good morning, everyone. What I first would say is that there's actually a lot of similarities between the two, because whether it's small ship on ocean or on river cruising, it's really about the destination rather than the amenities on board. Um, it's about where you're going, what you're going to experience ashore, that really makes the difference for, I think, all of us. Um, for river cruising in particular, though, there are some obvious differences, certainly geographically, but also um, those folks who might be um, nervous about small ship uh, ocean cruising because of seasickness, or they don't want to be too far from land, river cruising offers them the opportunity to get off every single day and experience the local culture in, I think, a, an easier way. What do you think, Gretchen? Well, first of all, thank you for putting this panel together. This is an amazing group. I want to sail on every single one of these lines. And some of them I have sailed on. And I, I got to tell you, river cruising is amazing. I was on one of the river cruise lines. And you look at some of the small ship amenities and what we have to offer. There is your, as you said, there's not that much dissimilar. However, when you look at somebody that's been on a large ship, and what they do is they immediately want to see the interior of Europe. This is a wonderful way to see the interior of Europe. Then you look at something like Sea Dream Yacht Club, where we go to those small, intimate yachting ports throughout Europe, and also the Caribbean as well. We're more luxury coastal cruising. So we have a way to get into places that they couldn't get to by land, and they couldn't really get to with a large ship. So it enables them to go into these places that you can't get to really on a river cruise. So it's a nice transition when you have somebody that's been on several river cruises and they've been on the Danube and they've been on some of the other rivers in Europe to transition into something like a Sea Dream Yacht Club where we have, we're about the same price as a river cruise and it enables them to see different destinations in a different manner mm -hmm. um, with luxury coastal cruising. 
Terrific. Anyone else want to chime in on this? Yeah, I actually would like to uh, just add. John. You know, one of, the, one of the nice advantages on the small ship cruise, Seaborn's an ultra luxury small ship cruise line, is that we're able to deliver a level of personalized, really tailored service that you just can't do on a, on a much larger ship. So um, if you have folks who really enjoy that style of, of travel, very personalized, bespoke, um, it, it really pr uh, pr presents a wonderful option. Also, there's places you can go on smaller ships and things you can do that you just can't on a larger one. Um, and a, g a great example is the Antarctica sailings that we do. You know, a small ship can do landings on the continent. You're, you're restricted at over 500 um, for landings in Antarctica. So it does open up some different things that you can do as well. Mm. Uh, Naveen, given, given the fact that um, small ship cruising does not advertise on the same scale as the large ocean, uh, the large ship ocean going lines, and through as many traditional marketing channels. Describe for us what the key role of the travel professional is in driving business. I think the key role for the travel professional is to truly understand all of their guests very, very thoroughly, and also to gain a deeper knowledge of each of our product lines. And the reason for that is the guest already is there. The prospect in your community already has access to a great deal of information. So the better you can educate yourself about this, the better off you are. Advertising is just one way to communicate and drive the customer into your fold. However, there are several other ways where you can be instrumental in your communities. Uh, you can host functions. Uh, you can even host webinars for your customers with our help where we can tell the story of these destinations and what it's like to travel with like-minded people and that'll help you select those guests and advise them on the experiences and destinations that work best for their tastes. Mm. Christine, what do you think about mm. that? <laughs> so, good morning, good morning everyone. So, this is the rise of river and small ship cruising. And I want to congratulate you all for being early risers here. And I think you made the first step to become successful in this topic because yes, it's about education. So you show you want to learn about it, uh, be present, um, connect with us on a personal level. That makes it much easier for the future once we know our faces here. And then of course, all the tools that we provide you uh, take advantage of it. So with Amar Waterways, uh, we offer you our Travel Agent Academy, um, where you have a course, and it shows that everyone who goes through this course will be much more successful in selling river cruising and our company. Um, of course, you also get some nice benefits coming with it. Um, the next step is probably to take advantage of all our seminars on the river opportunities. So book a fan with us, invest in your airfare, uh, I'm not sure if you heard Rudy saying the other night. Um, it is basically he wanted to become the first home-based river cruise line. And we are all entrepreneurs. We all started from the scratch. And we all invest something in order to make something. So invest yourself. Come on this river cruise. You will get the passion, the motivation. You become the expert. And that's all about. And then, of course, we have our team of BDMs supporting you in the field. Uh, go out with them in the local community, do your cruise nights there, do your wine and cheese um, uh, evenings, or maybe you just have an opening night and you support a local charity organization there. Take advantage of us, our resources, and of course, marketing-wise, we like to do the work for you as well. You are our strongest sellers, our marketing arm, our sales force, so we will create for you the flyers or the promotional material. And then, of course, you can go out and, and bring the business back to yourself and to us. It's all about the partnership. Carter, you're right. It is all about partnership. Carter, you're a leader of two lines. Mm -hmm. how, um, how do your most effective agencies drive business and awareness of your two brands? Sure. Well, our most effective agents, they really go after groups of people. Um, we do cater towards a lot of groups. Um, but, you know, they, they educate themselves on the brands. 
One of our biggest challenges is just that a lot of people don't know that you can take a high-end cruise in America and in the Great Lakes with Pearl Seas. Um, so travel agents, we rely on you to get the word out and to introduce people to this type of cruising, the small ship you know, sector as it is, um, but certainly our products as well. So. Mm. Uh, Nicola, you wanted to add something? Yes, I'd like to add, first of all, thank you, Clea, <laughs> to put together all this group of uh, cruise professionals here. And as we all know, I mean, cruising is still the ultimate vacation. Obviously, from the big ships to like luxury to river cruising, what is the best thing for somebody like just, you know, to get on board a vessel and explore the world? So I'm glad that all of you are there and with all of us, with these experts of like, you know, uh, river cruises and uh, luxury vessels here. Uh, as part of like Croisi Europe, you know, with 40 years experience, what we're trying to add is like also to destination and education. We try to bring like new places to visit, you know, around the world. And you can go from the big ships, the luxury ships. We also have a fleet of like, you know, river ships. And we also introduce in something else, always in the cruising concept of like, you know, uh, canal cruises in France. So, you know, you can try to reach any kind of audience out there for any kind of like special interest like they can have like from history, culture, or like the most laid back kind of cruise. So that's why this is like the right opportunity, value of you to learn more for all of us here and, you know, and maximize, you know, reward yourself to be a professional selling cruises. Thank you, Nicola. Patrick, you wanted to add something? Yeah, first of all, again, thank you for all being here. I would like to ask a question, a show of hands, how many are new to cruising? Looks like everybody. <laughs> How many are new to the small ship, river cruise, specialty cruise? That's fantastic. We've got a lot, well, we've Great got a lot of experts out there already. Um, you know, from Avalon's standpoint, without the travel agent, we would have a lot of ships that were empty. So you're extremely valuable. In addition to some of the things that have already been said about how good travel agents are successful, the traditional methods work, but we're seeing the social media savvy travel agent really starting to expand and grow. They're reaching so many more people. There's such wonderful opportunity to connect with individuals and groups and push out ideas. And it's been very, very effective and we're seeing tremendous, tremendous growth and success in that segment. Mm. And, and you know what, uh, certainly successful business relationships are based in part on effective collaboration. And Nicola, um, could you share with us an example of uh, across Europe working, with, working on a successful marketing and sales program with travel agencies? Um, and how would you recommend an agency that's either new to selling this segment or one that's been selling this segment but wants to take things to the next level? How would you recommend uh, they get started? Well, that's a good question, Charles, because basically the first step, you know, I'll see, I've been in the business about 20 years. I come from the big ships and it's almost a natural, but typically the first step for a cruiser because of like driving to the port here in the U.S., Galveston, Miami or anywhere else is like to try three, four night cruise on the big ships. But as that evolution from the cruiser start to enjoy what the cruise, you know, delivers, you know, the next steps, you know, comes to like, you know, exploring beyond, going across, you know, the Atlantic, going to Europe, go to other destinations of the world and try to see, you know, what, you know, what else is there to visit, you know, from like, you know, on, uh, on uh, a luxury vessel, on a river cruise, see Europe from a different perspective. So what we try to do for the agent is like to be educated, learn about the product, learn about the destination, because all of us here, we can bring you something that will always be a perfect need for, you know, for the agent. And we totally stand behind, you know, the, the trade, the, the, the travel agency community, because again, like Patrick said, you know, without you, really, our ships won't be as full, you know, so thank you. Mm. Thank you, Nicola. Um, John, how about, how about with Seaborn? What, what do you see, you know, certainly your brand um, has been, along for, been around for quite a few years, and um, what do you see as the most successful agents and agencies that break into it, and how they operate, and, and also take it to the next level? Maybe they've been selling Seaborn for a few years, sure. but they want to really gear things up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think a, a couple things I, I would say on that. Almost 30 years we've been around, so it's an exciting uh, milestone we're coming up on. Um, you, you know, we have a great, and, and many of my, my colleagues here, their lines do as well, but have great 
online training tool. So in, in the case of Seaborn, for example, we have a wonderful program called Seaborn Academy, and I saw a lot of hands go up here for folks who are not yet selling small ships or luxury, and, and I would encourage them just to take the first two modules, which is just learning how to sell luxury. If you do nothing else, it will help with that. You know, CLIA offers some wonderful training webinars too. I would, you know, we've, we've had great success with that. For, for people who are selling Seaborn, who want to grow that business and, and, and grow their base, groups are a fantastic way to do that. We have a very good group uh, program encouraging clients, the, their clients to find like-minded travelers, friends, organize something around food or wine or spa vacation. There's many ways they can do it, mostly through knowing the cruise lines you're selling as well as your clients and their likes and interests. I, I think we can all, we're all benefiting very much from this context because for a long time, and I, I think it's been for, I've been with CLIA for about a year now, employed by CLIA, and um, we've been talking about why you should be selling this segment for a long time now, but this is really about the how, and uh, you know, this is insight that I think takes it, takes it to the next step. Anyone else have a, yes, sure. Catherine. Yeah. Um, you talked about partnerships and yes. partnerships with travel agents and um, one of the things that comes to mind for me is a partnership, a three-way partnership between a travel agency in um, this case and um, Tauk River Cruising and a well-known chef in the area who had a restaurant, it's been a French restaurant that's been in business for 40 years and had a great following. And that chef, along with that travel agency partner, put together a group, ended up being, quite frankly, a group of 70 people wow. because they used the newsletter that the chef had to send out specials that the restaurant was having. So the mechanism was already there. The travel agent put together um, the air and some other amenities for that particular package. So the first year, there were 70 people on board. This next year, there's an entire charter of that river cruise. And I just got an email from the chef yesterday saying, this is such a success. I want to do two trips a year with you, and I want to go all over the world. So that was a great partnership with the travel agency, the chef at the restaurant, and um, Tauk River Cruising. Mm -hmm. That sounds terrific. Charlie, and, and oh, certainly. Yeah. Christine. I, I fully agree uh, what Catherine says. Uh, many of our own theme cruises actually came from our travel agents. I mean, it was the idea of our agents. Uh, you might know we have done our chocolate cruises, beer cruises. Um, we had a very nice knitting cruise over New Year's Eve. And uh, we worked it together with the agents. Um, they had their host. It was promoted in the community. And those are wonderful themes how you can get together um, you probably know our wine cruise program. We started six years ago with the first wine cruise. Now we offer over 45. And there was one agent in the community. He was new. Four years ago, he started with his business. And he now brings most of the wine hosts. And as of today, his business, business has topped over a million after four years specializing and becoming an expert. Mm. And I think you all can do it. You just have to focus on a nice theme where you are passionate about it. Mm. I'm gonna to go to Naveen and then, yes. and then right. Nicola and Gretchen. Naveen. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I think th there's a great deal of the world that is in classic cruise destinations, whether it be the Caribbean or the Mediterranean or uh, uh, the Baltic. There's also a whole new world emerging out there, and your customers are becoming increasingly interested in it. And that is a world of expedition cruising. And expedition cruising is quite a bit different from classic cruising. There is no motor coach in Antarctica or in Greenland that's going to take them anywhere. There's no cathedral for them to go to. These are about completely different experiences. And what this calls into play for each of you is to understand this word luxury, while it's overused, also speaks to a discerning client. And that client is looking to place their trust with you for making their dream come true. And that means you have to develop the expertise in understanding what expeditions are about, what these experiences really entail, 
who would be well suited for this type of adventure. These are people that generally are not looking for what I would classify as the lower Maslowian needs. They all assume there's going to be fine food. They all assume there'll be great service. They all assume there'll be wonderful amenities. What they are looking to do is be present in an experience that connects them with this type of traveling with a sense of purpose, with nature, with natural history, with native people, with wildlife, and things like that. And there is an enormous amount of commission for each of you to be made in these areas. But in order to do that, you first need to develop that expertise so that you are speaking with some level of authority. Certainly, you can do webinars. You can vis visit our websites. You can come to our booth, all of those types of things. But beyond that, almost nothing beats visiting a ship in port, whether it's ships in Alaska that we have this summer, or ships in the Mediterranean or other parts of the world, and getting some understanding of what this small ship business is really about. And last but not least, contact any one of us and get on our ship so you can actually experience what small ship cruising is like. That will give you infinite amount of confidence in advocating what this experience is about to your clients. Nicola. Yes, I'd just like to add for those of you new to river cruises, you know, don't be intimidated about selling the river cruise uh, because it's like with the evolution for the past 10, 15 years of river cruises here in North America and Canada, I've seen that, you know, more and more, all of us, all the brands on, you know, on this stage, we are like reaching out for like, you know, above and beyond any kind of demographics. I mean, as Christine said, you know, you can reach out special interest, uh, the chocolate, you know, the wines, but also the spirit of holiday at the holidays. So think about outside the box, the family traveling together, multi-generational and so forth. We have in the hiking, the biking. So again, to attract also all kind of like even younger demographics that, you know, a river cruise, specialty cruise is not just limited to a certain age, but it's open today, even in the future, to much more, you know, uh, uh, guests. And, you know, you are an ambassador. So again, educate yourself. If you've never been on a ship, you know, come on board, try the product, go back, energize yourself, and see what, you know, a river cruise, a specialty cruise is all about. So, you know, again, knowledge is like, you know, to be, you know, it's like a treasure, so. Mm, it certainly is. I'm gonna go to Gretchen and then Patrick. Okay, one of the things that you're hearing in a theme is one size doesn't fit all. With our river cruises and specialty cruises and small ships, we're very customized and we work with you directly to find out who your clients are and really help you develop your business. One of the fastest growing uh, group business and, and with us because we're only 56 staterooms is in many cases charter business is milestone birthdays. So you think about people that are going to be turning 50, they're gonna be turning 60, and in some cases 70, 80, 90, and they wanna bring all their family and friends, they're going to spend a little bit mo more money on that celebration. They're gonna be, they wanna travel. They don't want another trinket, they don't want another car when they're in that, that level of, of income. They want those experiences with family and friends. And that's something that we can all do for you, is really create that experience. But one of the things that you need to do is be proactive and not reactive. What happens with milestone birthdays is, usually the husband thinks about it maybe three months before the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Make him the star. <laughs> Contact him. You have all of their birth dates in your database. You know because you've got their passport information. So when somebody's turning 48, when somebody's turning 58, call them, wish them a happy birthday, but then contact them and ask them what they're thinking about doing for their upcoming milestone and be part of that. So they're not just kind of coming up with something three months before the, the birthday. You never know how big they're thinking until you start sitting down and talking with them. Some of these with us, it's, it's quite amazing because of our, our unique luxury yachting experience that we offer in the Caribbean and the Mediterranean. It's such a completely different experience than a cruise experience or a river experience. It really is like you're on your own private yacht. And what a fabulous experience that is 
for having your own private yacht for all your family and friends. We had a, a man in San Francisco, an agent, absolutely did this. She, and I'm telling you, I could tell numerous stories over and over again. It's an agent in San Francisco. She reached out to her client and um, the, the husband asked the wife, what are you thinking about doing for your 60th, for your 60th birthday? And she said, you know, I ha we had such a great time on Sea Dream in the Caribbean. We've never been to Greece. Let's take our two daughters and go to Greece. And he said, absolutely, that sounds wonderful. He went to the travel agent and said, I want to charter Sea Dream for my wife's 60th birthday <laughs> in Greece. And the, we picked the travel agent up off the floor. <laughs> and, we helped her close it in about eight days. He kept that secret, which is pretty amazing, from his wife for a whole year. She, up till the time they boarded the yacht, thought that it was just the two daughters and the husband and wife. You board on Sea Dream at the pool just like you would on a private yacht. They board. She sees all her family and friends all around the pool area. <laughs> Those experiences, I have to tell you, she has written us so many times and said, I have no idea what he's ever given me for my birthday before now. <laughs> I will remember those experiences every day for the rest of my life. And let me tell you, we just did one for a 90-year-old. He signed the charter contract when he was 88. He said they're either going to be celebrating my birthday or celebrating my life. He had such a great time. He had such a fabulous time that he signed another contract just last week for his 92nd yeah. birthday for a charter. So, you got to be proactive. You got to reach out. All of our products are fabulous for that. But of course, our our experience is so completely different—a private luxury yachting experience. That's fantastic. Yes, um, those birthdays and anniversaries that end in zero or five, mark them all down because and you can make. And the travel agent made seventy-five thousand dollars in commission. That's not a bad payday. <laughs> These are the folks that are going to pay you commissions with a comma, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Patrick, you, you have something. In, in fact, it's a very simple example, but kind of an extension of the, the family travel. Uh, there was an agent who completed the Avalon Specialist Program. And it's, you know, it's online, it's modular, it's, it's not too difficult if you commit some time, and there's lots of benefits and rewards. So this agent, she posted on her Facebook page that she had now become a Avalon River Cruise Specialist. She was excited about it and would be very happy to reach out to any of you. The first response she got was from her old boss of 15 years ago and said, you know, my mother's going to have her 70th birthday, ending in a zero. I'd love to take her on a river cruise. As a result of that, they ended up with an extended family of 18 people mm -hmm. that traveled for that birthday. She got a very healthy commission check, and it was really just about putting out the information. And if you reflect back to what Adam Goldstein said at the opening, you know, it's about professionalism. You're investing in your education. You're investing in specialization. You have a lot to offer, adding value for the customer and making sure that you convey that information to the customer because it's building your brand and it's keeping you connected to your customers and you could do it in so many ways that don't require that much energy or resources. Mm. Carter. Uh you know, it's fair to assume that in North America there are qualified river and ocean small ship cruising customers to be found virtually in any market. Um, that being said, what communities, either real or virtual, uh, would you recommend agents make outreach to and what approach would you recommend? Sure. Well, I mean, we certainly carry an older, more mature clientele generally mm -hmm. on our cruises. So. We have a lot of agents who will reach out to you know, more of the retirement type communities and have had a lot of success with that. Um, we've also had a, a lot of success with our theme cruises as well and agents who can leverage those themes. Maybe you find a group in the community and they have a common interest that aligns with one of our theme cruises. Uh, we offer wine cruises, history, art. Um, we have a, a wide variety, so, and also get creative. I mean, we have a lot of agents who come up, um, come to us with new ideas. We'll help you, we'll work with you, and make it, you know, a special event and a special cruise. Mm. Uh, Catherine, how about you? Uh, what communities do you see your most successful agents and agencies reaching out to um, to uh, create that awareness and, and to expand their market reach for, uh, for Tub? 
Um, it really depends, I think, on the agent and um, how uh, forward thinking they are and, and how they want to reach. But cultural arts groups are terrific for, um, I think, any of the river, well, really any of these products because it's about the destination and it's about going deeper. I've seen book clubs work um, because they tie, if they tie to the destination. Um, again, social media really works, posting. Um, we've seen uh, a post on a video for river cruising, which um, those of you who've come to our booth, we've given you a thumb drive. Post that on your social media, mm. and you'll be surprised how, how that will go viral and people will be picking up the phone and asking you for more information. Because you, at the end, need to be the experts about these products and how each one of these products fits your particular clients. But I would say cultural um, arts groups, um, wine clubs, host, um, uh, work with a local wine and cheese shop and, and host a special event. It doesn't take very much mm. um, effort. You could do it with your whole agency. You could partner with a couple of, the, of your fellow travel agents that you've met in the community because community also helps um, uh, extend your reach. So social media, community, looking for those like-minded travelers who, who want to go a little bit deeper and who want to connect with the culture. Thank you, Catherine. Naveen, I, um, you know, expedition cruises, how, how, did, how do effective agents reach out to communities to find affinity groups and so forth? Sure. I think one important thing to keep in mind is you sell these people one client at a time. Don't ever forget that. They don't all come in droves. So the important thing for you to do is to understand the community and be very connected to it. If you have guests that have previously taken a safari, they're a prime customer for adventure travel on the ocean. And we have cruises that go on expeditions to the Arctic, the Antarctic, the Russian Far East, in Alaska, in Asia between Burma and Bali, in Australia, in the northern part in the Kimberley, in Borneo, between Papiete and Easter Island and Hawaii. Almost the entire globe is covered with expeditionary cruising. These are people that want to understand native cultures. These are people that want to see something about local flora and fauna and want experts to deliver that. These are people that may have other interests as well besides safaris and things like that. One example, next year we have two cruises that are photography and nature cruises and are being led by experts who will help the guests actually take pictures. We are all now amateur photographers with our mobile phones. Well, these people will help them craft their pictures just a little bit better, and then towards the end of the cruise, there'll be a photo contest, which will engage all the guests, and they'll vote on what are the best pictures and what are the best techniques and simple ones to use. That's just one other avenue that you can derive customers from. So think of photography, think of adventure travel, get to know your customers just a little bit better. And think of people that are no longer, as Gretchen pointed out, looking to collect things that are tangible. They are looking to collect memories. They are looking for investing in themselves by traveling with a sense of purpose. And mm. I think that's what you really need to carve out for yourselves. John, I, I sold my first Seaborne cruise by um, addressing a Rotary Club breakfast mm -hmm. on luxury cruising. And uh, it led me to a, several bookings. What, what are some of your more savvy agents doing to get things going you know we've had we've had folks do a variety of things we've had folks uh, one very clever uh, agent actually partnered with a with a local high-end auto dealership to do a client event she brought some of her clients they brought some of hers i mean this, it's getting out of the box and just thinking about different different ways to do that you know just on the on the uh, the topic that we're just uh, uh, speaking on i'm going to just add one um one point i think everyone 
has suggested fantastic ways to find folks, milestone birthdays, special interests, et cetera. But I want to remind folks of something that Arnold Donald said, because I really believe it's true, and that we are really competing with land destinations mm -hmm. uh, as a vacation choice. And if you think about all of the lines that are up here, we represent fantastic ways to see destinations. And, and folks out there are, are, you hear the word bucket, you, bucket list used a lot. Folks are checking off those places that they want to see. So I think travel agents who can help their clients understand why small ship cruising is a, a river cruising is a fantastic way to do that. You unpack once, you can, in our case, have a Thomas Keller meal, uh, wake up in a new city every morning. I mean, it really is breaking down those barriers to cruising and help folks understand it's a great way to see the world. It certainly is. Rich? So um, your question is so good because our product is so unique and different. We're all about the outdoors. Yachting, if you, I know you all have your own private yacht, right? <laughs> well, I want an invitation on your yacht <laughs> because I want you to come on our yacht. Um, it's about the outdoors. It's very different. You spend time, you eat outdoors, you play with the water toys, we swim off the back of the yacht. So it's just like being on your own private yacht going to those small intimate destinations. So American Express Card did an analysis of our clients several years ago and they came back to us and they said, your clients don't look anything like any of the other cruise clients. Seabourn's clients, Silver Sea's clients, Crystal's clients, and Regent's clients all have the same income level as your clients but their spending habits on Sea Dream are very different. So we said, well, what makes them different? And they said, a very large percentage of your clients own a boat. So we immediately started talking to our travel agent partners about going after yacht club groups. And we're really specific and surgical, and we've been very successful with our travel agents going to those communities that have yacht clubs. Also, country clubs, it's the same kind of mentality, it's the same kind of social mentality, and they absolutely love going on Sea Dream as a group as well. So if you do have yacht clubs in your area, normally they do travel together, and we are the perfect alternative for those yacht club groups. Also, within country clubs, keep in mind, they also have book clubs. They also have garden clubs. They also have the Ladies Golf Association, the Men's Golf Association, the Tennis Association. They have clubs within those clubs. So when you go to a high-end country club, you need to talk to them about all those little mini clubs that are within the clubs. And each one of those have an affinity for a group. Almost all of us have wine programs. We kind of like wine. <laughs> and wine groups, we've all talked about it, wine groups are fantastic. Those country clubs that you're talking to, they also have wine clubs within the country clubs. Mm. So go after those country clubs. That's great advice, Gretchen. Thank you. Christine, how do your, now we just talked about reaching out to communities, proactive. And remember folks, if the phone isn't ringing, pick it up and make a call. How, let's talk about the folks that the customers that come in. How do your most successful agents qualify folks that may not be asking for a small ship or uh, experience, but that might be qualified for them? Okay, so maybe let's just spin it to the other side. Uh, once the agents are in Europe on the river cruise, and I hope once you do it, you take your contact list with you no matter if it's your family, your friends, um, um, your kids, schools, teachers, whoever are your clients, your local community, your church, we just talked about this. And now you send them a postcard from the ship. We provide free postcards, free stamps. You can write 500 or 1,000 if you want. We have enough supply. And now you just send them the message, I wish you were here with me and then you call them up right when you are back from your cruise and introduce the concept of river cruising or you just tell the story, what you just saw on the Rhine River, those beautiful castles, or when you went on the Mekong with us and you received the Buddhist blessing in the largest monastery in Cambodia. All of these stories your clients want to hear and then of course you will figure out in your phone conversation um, 
what really the interest is of your client, but the first step was done. The interest is there, or you, you had this wake up call with your client, it's on the bucket list, and now you have to guide them to the right destination and the right river cruise ship, because also the ships can be very, very different from larger ships with beautiful balcony cabins to the very, very small ones um, with you know, the same very beautiful amenities, but a much more cozy environment. So I would say this is number one. Mm. Um, number two, uh, we just talked about the family market uh, a little bit. Um, I think uh, the perception about river cruising in the past was once I'm 80, maybe my 80th birthday, I can celebrate, that's all that I can do, then I choose a river cruise. Well, that's not true anymore today because you can be so active on a river cruise. Sometimes I hear guests saying, I need a vacation after my vacation <laughs> because they wanted to take advantage of all the options, the included options that were offered. Um, but you probably also know about our partnership with Adventures by Disney, where Adventures by Disney chartered ships on the Danube now and dedicated this to the family market. And that's a really nice idea because they bring their own guides on board, they curate, uh, curate their own program. We build ships, our new ships have now connecting door cabins, a third and a fourth bed in some of the cabins. So now think about what can you do with all the families in your own environment and communities. You can really recommend river cruising as well. And it can be an Adventures by Disney product, but it could be a Christmas time cruise when the kids are out of school and you know the grandparents, the parents, the kids want to travel together. Usually it's grandpa, maybe mm -hmm. had just the 80th birthday paying the bill, right? Yeah. But everyone wants to spend time together and away from each other. One is going biking, the other one hiking, the other one takes the culinary excursion, but they all sit together during the dinner conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that makes us all, between small ship and river cruising, so special. And I think uh, no matter what your interest is, you will have the right client right in your own backyard. Thank you, Christine. Patrick, how, how, do, how do your most successful agents uh, qualify people who don't know exactly what experience they want? Well, I think Christine's already given some excellent examples. If you look at just some sort of factual things, demographics, I mean, you're, you're still looking, probably for most of us, the core travelers are 55 to 70 plus. That's the, still going to be the majority. Uh, they're educated, okay? There's, uh, they're well-traveled. They may have been on ocean cruises, land vacations. Um, it's quite likely that they own their own home, their, their children might be already out of school. So they're in that time of their life. And again, I'm generalizing, but it's still a core that they now have the time and the wherewithal, the income, to really start enjoying the fruits of what they've done for many, many years. So, I mean, that's kind of the core. Then you, of course, have profiles on your customers. What are their interests? What things do they like? When do they like to travel? What kind of food do they like? Do they like sports? In other words, you have built a profile of your traveler and the successful ones with that information and regular communication to your customer. And I don't mean sending them a deal, but keeping connected, congratulating them on a birthday or their sports team once, sending them a beautiful image of a place that you've just been. All of those will keep the connection and start stimulating the interest. But generally speaking, you need to know that these are the groups demographic-wise, that are the most likely prospects. Certainly not the, on, the only, but the most likely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we, as we uh, begin to wrap up this panel, I, I cannot encourage you enough. What is the next step here? You've gotten some terrific inf information from the leaders in this segment. The next step is to visit our marketplace, the Cruise 360 marketplace, because as gracious and, and warm and professional as, is, as are the crews aboard every one of the vessels represented here today, you'll also find the business development managers, the partnerships to be equally as uh, professional and warm and gracious. These people want your business, they want to put money in your pocket, 
and that we have a dedicated specialty small ship cruising pavilion in the marketplace. I, I cannot encourage you enough to visit this section and sit down and start having some meaningful professional uh, commercial conversations with them about how you can develop a strategy and really venture into this business. Or if you're already selling this, take it to the next level. So thank you to all of the esteemed panelists here today and thank you all.